Good everyone, I'm going to video and today we have a review on the French Yak 3. Now as you're going to notice in my replays folder, there's actually more but I've moved them to a separate folder. Um, I've got a lot of reviews coming up of premiums. Now I'm doing this because I've realised A, I've missed out on quite a few premiums that I haven't reviewed yet. And B, I want to make sure people do not waste their money and obviously buy a premium that isn't very good. So I'm going to be reviewing as many premiums as I can. Obviously, I'm not going to be reviewing the painful ones. You already know they're painful, such as the German Wellington. We already know that's painful. That thing is there for memes. So there you go. So starting out today with the French Yak 3. I haven't. I was actually going to review this earlier, but um, I've just not gone around to it. Um, and well, it's it's a Yak 3. What can I really say? It's great at low altitude, good at medium altitude, not very good at high altitude. It coughs and wheezes up there. Now it can still wind itself up at high altitude, but it takes a lot longer compared to its opposition. So the French Yak is actually rather fun to fight against the Russians because they don't expect a, a French Yak. And obviously I know the weaknesses of the Yaks and the Lalas and stuff, so it's very easy to beat them in the Yak, so that's a lot of fun. However, as probably some of you are going to jump in the comments, they're, 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 the guns are ping re reliant, let's put it that way, the guns are ping reliant. Now, I have 23 millisecond ping on average, at the highest probably going to about 36. So my ping is pretty solid, and it makes this aircraft very, very good. However, if you have over 100 ping, I cannot recommend this aircraft to you. I know it seems a little silly just because of one little standpoint, but I'd rather you spend your money on something that can actually work for you rather than actually having to put up with sparks and no kills and dying all the time because you can't kill anything because you're sparking. Now, if you're going to go for something that isn't the French Yak and you need a premium in the French line, my personal recommendations are to Talisman either the MB175T the SB2C Helldiver, the P63C5, or if you want to go into rank 4, the F4U7 and the AD4 Sky Raider. These are perfect choices for talismans, and well, while some of them, like the AD4, are a little bit more expensive than the Yak, because the Yak is 1600 Eagles to talisman, it is still an aircraft to consider over the Yak if you have high ping. So let's go over the performance and the guns before we get into the proper battle that took place. And trust me, you're going to want to pay attention to this battle. So the French Yak-3 is armed... Well, before we begin with the armament, actually, I said I'd do the performance. That is how forgetful my memory is today. Um, the performance at low altitude is really good. The medium altitude performance, about 7,000 to 10,000 feet in that area... Is relatively good but obviously as you take it up to higher above 15,000 feet this thing really starts to wheeze because you've got to remember yaks are tuned for low altitude now I personally like the fact that it's a medium to low altitude brawler because it's a very good brawler but if you're fighting above 16,000 feet I would advise trying to bring the fight low that's the best thing you can do. But obviously, that's not always going to work. And obviously, if you're fighting Germans, they're probably not going to want to come down because they'll have the altitude advantage. So you're going to have to tussle with them as best you can and hope for the best. And obviously, you will be able to outturn them in the Act 3. Now, fighting Japan is going to be a lot harder because obviously you can't outturn them. You're going to use your speed. And there's some Japanese planes that can actually keep up with the Act 3. But that's a whole different ball game. And to be fair, I think I fought the Japanese twice and it wasn't actually that hard because I fought zeros and I think one a7m which I knew how to counter anyway so let's go over the guns quickly before we continue with the actual um with the actual full-on review and obviously the gameplay part obviously before I begin that engine has 1320 horsepower very effective and at low altitude it's well it's getting the most it can get so Keep it low, keep it medium, just don't take it high, as I've already mentioned. Then you've got your armament, which is two 50 caliber Berezin UB machine guns with 150 rounds apiece. This isn't a lot of ammo. 
As you're going to notice in this battle, I'm very trigger patient, apart from one where the guy refused to die. You have to be very trigger patient with this aircraft. And whilst the aircraft is very good at doing that, because obviously you can split your guns if you wish, I don't tend to. Um, you do have to be careful with your ammo. And with just 150 rounds of gun in the Berezins, it's not really preferred. It used to be 200 rounds of gun, but they nerfed it. So, so your other weapon is a 20mm Shavak, very well known for being a bit whack. So, this isn't going to be the most useful weapon, but if you put in your armored targets, you can at least get some use out of it. So, there you go, you at least have something to use. But personally, I wouldn't rely on just a Shavak. I just join the guns if I was to be brutally honest but the aircraft is still kind of capable even if you do split the guns because obviously you can stay in the fight a little longer but I personally prefer to have all three guns firing because that way you can at least keep the aircraft in a good situation and manage to drop your enemies quicker so let's get into the battle and let's show you off what this aircraft can really do as you can tell on the left hand side when I went into the replace folder that isn't all of them, I still have some on a separate file, because I didn't want to just cluster up my replays, and then obviously if some of them die off, I can at least save some of them, but let's put it this way, there's a lot to do, so over the next coming weeks, possibly months, there's going to be a lot of premium reviews on aircraft that you may not expect me to review, let's put it that way. There's some funny moments in some of them, and there's also some, oh my Jesus, how did I get away with that, sort of thing. So in this battle, I'm actually joined by Hairy Feet, where, well, we're, we, we was just looking to, well obviously I was looking to get some footage for this plane, and he was like, yeah sure, I'll bring along my Burger 109, and straight away we thought this was going to be a loss. As you can tell by the team composition, we have a Brigand, we have a B-17E, a Helldiver with bombs, a B-17, a Typhoon with bombs, and a P-47 fully loaded up with crap. We automatically assumed that this battle was going to be a failure. But it turned out not to be. Now before I continue, you may notice that the decals on the wings are actually different to what you get on your Yak when you get this aircraft. If you obviously do. Um, that's because I put on the proper French Air Force Roundel because I couldn't find the proper one and obviously it was irritating me that I, I, I just wanted to correct the aircraft to my special, or like my personal prefer or preference, because I don't understand why this aircraft has a different decal to the others, so I thought, well, I'll just slap on the French Air Force roundels and that way it fixes it and it doesn't irritate me as much. So there you go. Now we do have a Skyrocket, but he's... He's not going to do too much, but obviously, as you can tell, this aircraft climbs very well. 20 degrees is the angle I climb at, and that is the preferred climb angle that you should go to until about 15,000 feet, and then you're going to want to drop to, it to 15, and then gradually decrease the higher you go if you need to go that high. Obviously, on the enemy team, if you're going to be fighting at altitude, you don't really want to fight 109s at altitude, same with G55s. But against the P-47s at sort of medium altitude, you can get away with those because you obviously turn better and they won't be able to wind up as effectively as you can. So do take that into account. Now in this battle, this... I, I didn't know... Well, I'd, I'd, I'd love to know how me and Harry survived this, let's put it that way. It was a very intense battle that we had and I personally think that we should have died and I shouldn't have gotten the result that I did, but... Hey, home. So as you can see over there, we've got a 264 and a BV, which is over to the far right. Um, those are the only bombers on the enemy team. They're, they're, they're going to do their job, but I'm not bothered about those. And that brigand is actually going to come in real handy later down the line. So obviously we're climbing up to altitude, and obviously the aircraft's climbing extremely well. It's got a great rate of climb, but obviously as, as you get higher and higher, the climb rate does start to drop off quite considerably because obviously this aircraft is losing power. Um, I'm sure Flight will give you the details in the comments of what horsepower it's putting out at altitude because he knows better than me. 
but let's put it this way, above 16,000 feet, this thing's a bit of a dog, let's put it that way. It can still work up there, but it's going to be very hard compared to your opposition. So obviously we're climbing up, and I'm just going to skip this ahead to the battle now, obviously now that I've told you more about the aircraft and everything. And I'll be brutally honest, I'd love to know how we survived this. Now, it, at this point, it doesn't look too bad for us, does it? Got a couple of 109s and a G55 lower than us. You will mostly be above the 109s as long as you know your climbing angles. I I tended to outclimb 109s. The, the the hardest one to outclimb was the G2, but we all know the G2 is amazing in its climb, so that that's not really a fair comparison. But even so, the G2 traps are going to be the most dangerous for you to actually deal with. Also, alongside the F4, which can actually turn pretty dang decently. Now, I'm not sure what's going on with the camera here. This appears to be a replay bug, but the chubby stalls himself out, and I bag myself my first kill. Obviously, as you saw there, I had the guns joined, but at this point, a 109 decides to come in behind and start trying to shoot me up the ass. which, in the Spitfire review, you'll see I do get shot up the ass by a friendly this time. And obviously, you can turn with the... Um, well, you can turn with the 109s, but at this altitude, you're going to start to struggle with them. Because obviously, they have more horsepower than you do, for the most part, anyway. And as you, as you saw, I did take a couple of hits from the 15mm cannons, and the aircraft was not liking it, but obviously, I had to keep the aircraft in the fight. And, well, that's just how it is. Obviously, what the replay is not showing you is I'm actually sparking on this guy. Um, there's one spark, and there you go. Took a lot of ammo to put that guy down, but we needed to get rid of him. Same with that G55 for kill number two and three, respectively. And this has just descended into a giant furball. Obviously, me and Harry are fighting our asses off to try and get out of this alive. Now, in a turn fight, you're not actually going to be able to beat a G55 at most speeds, but if you can... If you can force the G55 to lose his energy, you will beat him. So there goes that 190, I set him on fire. And there's kill number 4. But obviously now I've got a 109 F4 coming to take a crack at me. And we've still got another few 109s in the area. And a G55. And as you can tell, it's just a giant furball. It's like we're in arcade and... The Yak really does like this, because obviously the Yak is going lower and lower with every rotation. So, if anything, the Germans are making it worse for themselves, and this is the perfect opportunity to utilize the Yak. Because as I mentioned, there's my final kill, kill number 5, and that's the Ace. Um, the aircraft is very capable as you go lower and lower, and that's what you need to do. You need to bring the fight low. And that is pretty much the entire enemy team dead. It's just the 264 and the G6 BF109, which you could take a G6 in this thing all day long. Just don't, just don't take it above 16,000 feet, as I mentioned. But um, that pretty much is the end of the battle for me and Harry. Obviously, I'm damaged and I'm low on ammo, so I want to head back. Harry's damaged and he wants to head back to obviously fix his aircraft and grab some ammo as well but by the time we get back to the runway the match is pretty much over so that brigand over there by the way he he really pulled his weight I think he got three kills he ends up killing that 109 G6 later down the line so as I said this aircraft's very capable I do like the French Yak however if you've got high ping and you're not very trigger patient, I cannot advise this aircraft. And as mentioned towards the start of this video, I've already given suggestions to what I would talisman if you do not like yaks, or if you do not have the ping suitable for yaks. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed today's video on the Yak 3, or the French Yak 3, and well, I'll see you all on the next premium review, because I've got about another 15 to record, it feels like. It's not actually 15, but it might as well be. But anyway, I'll let you guys off. Hope you enjoyed and I'll see you all on the next one.